Terry, back with you at D-Lab with another biasing issue. This time I'm working on the JCM50, Marshall, of course. Just installed a pair of EL34 output tubes, went to adjust the bias, there's no test points. You get online, you look it up, everybody's like, take it to attack. I was like, no, this should be an easy way to do this. Well, I'm gonna show you what it is. All right, so if we take a look at this amp underside here, here's the two EL34s. Here's your bias adjustment, which goes to the grid of each output tube. And these guys just want you to crank on this pot until you see a certain voltage and think, wow, that's great. Well, no, it's not great. So let's zero in here on the tubes, okay? All right, so here is pin eight and one. This is typical, they jump the two, and there's a wire going to ground, okay? That's on the same on both tubes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this jumper wire and we're gonna put in some precision resistors to um, allow us to look at the current through the output tubes. Our first step is to get in here and remove the little jumper wire. Then we're going to install these little 1 ohm 1% 1 precision resistors in their places. So let me get those in. We'll cut back to this and do the measurement. All right, so as you can see, I've got the two little precision 1 ohm resistors installed. It's about a 10 minute job. I've got to caution you though, when you install these, be very careful that you don't, uh, you know, hit these other wires. Make sure these ground connections are secure. Otherwise, you could actually do more harm than good. All right, so now we are ready to start our test. Okay, I have one meter connected to the precision resistor. Once again, be very careful that this alligator clip doesn't touch anything else or it's gonna go kapowy, okay? This one here is monitoring the plate voltage. And I've got two meters here. This one here is at 200 millivolts. And this one here is at 1,000 volts. So we can watch everything that's going on. And backside, I've installed an eight ohm little 10 watt dummy load. One thing too, make sure that your volume controls are all the way down for setting the bias. Okay, so here we go, maiden voyage of your new bias adjustment. I'm going to turn on the power. This is just filament power right now. Allow the tubes to warm up. All right. I have my uh, output set at high. Here is our little bias adjustment pot right here. Okay. I'm going to turn on standby and you'll see the current coming up on this meter. Now the one ohm resistor, what you're seeing here in millivolts is the actual current flowing through that tube. So right now you're at 27 milliamps through that tube. Over here is our plate voltage, we're about 461. Okay, I'm gonna let it heat up and then we're gonna tweak our bias to about 30, 33 to 35 milliamps through the tube. So let's tweak our little pot here. Oh, going the wrong way. Okay, go this way a little bit. About 33, 34. And remember, when the tube warms up, this is gonna drift. So you're gonna wanna watch it for a little bit, okay? So I usually go about 33, let them float around, let them stabilize. And there you go. So at that point, you should have po proper power distribution through the tubes, and you can safely be sure that you've got your bias set correct. All right, so <clears throat> obviously we should check the bias through the other tube, okay? So let's turn off standby. Watch all this fall. You wanna make sure that your current goes to zero and the high voltage you want that to go down to zero before you move leads so you don't get zapped. I've done this enough to where I'm not going to get zapped, but I just want to caution you about that. Okay, now we're on the other tube. Let's turn the high voltage back on. Up she comes. I set the other one to about 33 mils. This one looks like it's about 31. 
So these were a matched set of tubes. They appear to be pretty close. And of course as tubes run and age, they'll balance out and they'll end up dying and then you get to replace them again. So there you have it. We've solved the problem of biasing a marsh lamp, okay? Now you can do this on the big 100 waters too. You just gotta have four resistors instead of two, all right? The other good thing about this resistor that I didn't point out is the EL34 tubes have a real nasty habit of shorting from the cathode to heater and blowing everything up. This little uh, resistor that you put in will actually act like a fuse now. So that will pop before it goes through and wipes out your ramp. So all in all, it's a great thing to do and it's a great way to monitor your bias and make sure your ramp's running properly without having to take it to attack. Hope you enjoyed the video.